I'm Mike Yuyak. I love to try new things, and I've had culinary adventures all around the world, as well as right at home. I've had really wonderful food, as well as some really horrible food. I'd like to share some of my adventures with you, and we'll see if I have what it takes to fix whatever goes wrong. This is Recipe Redemption. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Recipe Redemption. It occurred to me recently that my newest segment, WTF Theater, was unnecessarily limited by the scope I had chosen, because there is a plethora of inexplicable food out there in the world. If you not only include pictures of dishes from the internet with no attached recipe, but also include fictional foods from movies and television. What's in Slurm Soda from Futurama? Or, if you were to actually make Soylent Green, what would it taste like? Hint, cannibalistic cultures in Polynesia and Southeast Asian islands often called human meat long pig for a reason, so there's a hint. Thus, I thought I'd start off our exploration into fictional food with an iconic yet enigmatic dish from the small screen and a trip way down under to the imaginary underwater community of Bikini Bottom. Yes, I'm talking about SpongeBob SquarePants. And the popular fast food that's all the rage among the bottom feeders, the Krabby Patty. According to show canon, the actual ingredients of the, of the Krabby Patty are a closely guarded secret. From time to time, there are glimpses of the recipe. Apparently, Plankton is always trying to get his hands, or cilia, on it. And there is some debate about what it's made of. The toppings include fresh sea lettuce, sure, crisp sea onions and sea tomatoes with sea cheese, pickles, mustard, mayonnaise, ketchup, and a sesame seed bun. The patty itself is at times described as having no meat in it whatsoever, while at other times is said to be made of meat, but of what kind is still a mystery. Some other ingredients have been mentioned include flour, barnacle shavings, salt, and turmeric, plus a pinch of chum, secret sauce, and a pinch of King Neptune's Poseidon powder, whatever that is. <laughs> Others have said it's simply a hamburger, but I just can't buy that theory. If you go to all the trouble of saying that you top it with sea lettuce and sea onions, etc., then you're acknowledging that the food eaten in Bikini Bottom probably comes from the sea, which makes sense. So, where would you source ground beef? Thus, my experiment will involve making a patty out of only ingredients you could reasonably expect to get from the ocean. I'm not going to restrict myself to just Bikini Bottom, because where is Bikini Bottom? You sort of assume it's in the tropics, but you don't really know. Um, and, you know, the oceans are all interconnected in a way, so you, one could reasonably expect that maybe they're able to get ingredients from a little further out than just their little coral reef or wherever they are. Um, I'm not going to worry about the toppings or condiments because what the hell is a sea tomato anyway. Uh, a small concession will be the bun because none of my research has revealed a way to make a decent looking bun um, out of only oceanic ingredients. Even a wheat gluten-free bun has some sort of nut or grain-based flour, plus leavening. Uh, never mind the logistics of actually baking something underwater. So, for the moment, I'm going to ignore the idea also that uh, Mr. Crab is a cannibal and avoid the obvious use of crab in the crabby patty and go with ground fish and various forms of kelp or seaweed. If that idea fails, and I give myself about a 60% chance of failure on this experiment, I will then turn to using crab and making what I would cook if tasked with creating a sandwich known as a crabby patty. Uh, that is a crab cake sandwich. And uh, if I'm no longer restricted to using only ingredients from the sea, then uh, I'll make it the way I would make a crab cake sandwich. Let's get cooking. going to start this experiment off with some combo, 
which is a thick type of kelp popular in certain Japanese dishes for adding a lot of flavor. I'm just going to drop that into my food processor and blitz it up. I think it'll add a good bit of texture to my Krabby Patty in addition to flavor. Next I'm adding a little bit of cod for the meaty element of this dish. I'm also adding some nori I had around from my attempt at making sushi at home. I find nori gets a little sticky when it gets wet, so I'm hoping once this grinds up into the mix it'll act as sort of a binder, since I've prohibited myself from using eggs or breadcrumbs to stick this all together, so hopefully this will do the trick. For added smoothness, I'm using olive oil. And I know, I know. Where are the fish going to get olives to press for olive oil? Well, I didn't think to get any cod liver oil, so this will have to do. But the concept is the same, and I think the cod liver oil would make this taste worse than it has to. Luckily for seasoning, good old sea salt is not only within the rules, it's actually pretty darn tasty. The final mixture was not as sticky as I would have liked, so although I successfully formed it into a patty, I don't hold out a whole lot of hope that it's going to hold together very well. Which was just silly, wishful thinking. So after I flipped the parts over, I shoved them together to try to cook them as a patty again. And then I said screw it and spooned the crumbly mess onto the bun. After drying out and toasting a little, this looks disturbingly like weed. And thus, my Krabby Patty. Uh, so I didn't use any binder, and as a result it's a little crumbly, but what's important is how it tastes. I use too much salt. It kind of overpowers everything else. The texture, um, it's a little chunky because I used a food processor instead of a blender. I kind of, I kind of wanted the kombu to actually retain some of its texture, so that's definitely in there. There's just a little bit of a crunch. Um, <clears throat> If I had put so much salt in, I could taste uh, a little bit more of the fish. Uh, it almost gets lost in this. But it's not bad, actually. <laughs> it seems kind of odd. And if I had access, ready access, to other uh, oceanic ingredients, uh, I might actually try those as well. Now, as a binder and sort of an emulsifier, uh, if I if I could actually get a hold of some Tobiko, which is a flying fish roe, that's the little orange fish eggs that you see on some sushi. Um, those actually, they're eggs, and so they actually contain a little bit of lecithin in them. Not as much as like a chicken egg does, um, per, per egg, of course, uh, but it does have some so you could actually grind up some tobiko, mix it in, and it would help to act as a, as a binder. The proteins in there and the lecithin would act as an emulsifier. So any oils and uh, water-based chemicals would bind together. Um, now mind you, also you could use uh, things like sea beans. Um, other fish might work better for this. Mm. But I'm thinking for a Krabby Patty, if we ignore the sort of cannibalistic elements <laughs> of it, uh, a Krabby Patty should really be crab. I mean, it's in the name. And I'm fairly sure crabs being you know, bottom-feeding scavengers, uh, I'm pretty sure they would uh, result to resort to cannibalism if the opportunity presented itself. If one of their numbers uh, died, I'm pretty sure they would have no qualms about, you know, real-life crabs would have no qualms about eating their compatriots. 
Uh, Mr. Crab, maybe, but real crabs, no. So a Krabby Patty, to my mind, is a crab cake sandwich. Um, that's, that's what I would make, and as a matter of fact, that's what I'm gonna make. We'll start with the remoulade. Over an open burner, I'm going to fire roast a red bell pepper. Basically, just let one side blacken and then turn it so that all sides get a nice char. This not only cooks the pepper and imparts a smoky element to it, it also makes it easy to remove the skin. Since bell peppers are rarely perfect spheres, there are some nooks and crannies that the flames might not evenly reach, and this is the time to use your trusty kitchen torch. Although it's not absolutely an essential kitchen tool, I highly recommend getting one. Because fire. Blast away at your pepper until it's mostly black all the way around. Then drop the pepper into a bowl of cold water. Some people like to put the pepper into a bag and let it steam itself for 10 minutes to basically loosen the skin even more, but I prefer to just shock and rub. That sounded dirtier than I intended, but the, the cold water stops the cooking process and you can rub the charred skin right off of the pepper. Then pull on the stem to remove the seeds and core and you're ready to move on. separating an egg and dropping the yolk into my blender. Be sure to save that egg white for later, no sense in wasting it. A remoulade sauce is basically a mayonnaise, so you're going to make an emulsion here. To my egg yolk, I add half of my red pepper, it's all I need. Save the other half for your eggs in the morning, trust me. Uh, plus a squirt of lemon juice and some kosher salt. And then blend until well mixed. With the blender running, slowly drizzle in some vegetable oil until the mixture starts to thicken. You're looking for something that is thick, but still pourable. Pour your finished remoulade into a container with a lid and refrigerate. Now onto your crab cake patty. In a mixing bowl, I empty a can of crab meat. I have fancy crab meat here. In this case, fancy means fine, i.e. broken up. But if you could get it, you should really use lump crab meat. Yes, it's more expensive, but it's worth it to get big luscious chunks of crab in every bite. To this, I add the egg white I saved from earlier, plus one whole egg. Some breadcrumbs that I've seasoned with garlic powder, onion powder, kosher salt, and Old Bay seasoning. And I like to add a little Parmesan cheese to my crab cakes. Some people also add mayonnaise to this mixture, but I think that's kind of gilding the lily, and I don't bother. Um, plus, you're gonna get that element in the remoulade sauce anyway. Mix all this to combine. If you're, especially if you're using lump crab meat, don't over mix this. You don't wanna break up those chunks. Uh, this looks a little wet right now, but if you let it sit a few minutes, the breadcrumbs will soak up some of the moisture and it'll tighten up. If it's still too wet, you can always add a little bit more breadcrumb, but don't go crazy with it, or you won't taste the crab. It'll just taste like bread. Now dump the whole mess into a hot pan with some oil and use a spatula to spread it out until it's about a half inch thick. As it turns out, this really probably makes two patties, because I eventually had to trim this one to fit onto the brioche bun. Didn't bother me, because I still got to eat the trim, but for you, especially if you're making this for more than one person, make multiple patties, press them out until they're about a half inch thick, and yeah, you'll be good to go. Just like with the previous patty, you don't want to poke at this while it's cooking. Give it a few minutes to cook and crisp on this side before you attempt to flip it. And you really want to use a spatula that supports the whole patty at once when you do. I have more binders in this, so it should hold together, but uh, it's still kind of a goopy uh, concoction, so you want to do everything you can not to disturb it too much. When 
when your patty is getting close to done, spread some of your red pepper remoulade onto a toasted brioche bun, and then gently place your cooked crab cake onto the bun. And just for fun, I'm also adding some sliced avocado. Consume immediately, as if you needed me to tell you that. So, here it is, the Krabby Patty, the way that I probably should have done it to begin with. Mm. Oh, oh yeah, that's so much better. Nice crab cake, not too bready. The red pepper remoulade, could use a little, actually a little more salt. I kind of erred in the opposite direction this time, but it's not that bad. Um, there's plenty of seasoning uh, in the crab patty itself. Avocado adds just a nice little bit of extra richness to it. Nice brioche bun. Really can't go wrong. Mm. Obviously a certain degree of artistic license is at play here. But if you can believe that a filter feeding tunicate can actually have a squirrel in a deep sea diving suit for a girlfriend, and somehow become mobile enough to hold down a job at a fast food restaurant with a starfish as a friend, then sure, <laughs> you can suspend disbelief enough to accept the idea of a hamburger that somehow holds up underwater. My experiment in creating a Krabby Patty from ingredients that Mr. Krab would actually have at his disposal was not a rousing success, but I think with a little tinkering it could be at least an interesting addition to your sandwich repertoire particularly if you aren't as finicky about the allowed ingredients and could throw in an egg or some breadcrumbs to help hold it all together. Um, a little less salt, better seasoning, perhaps a you know, bit better seasoning. Uh, to my mind, however, if you ask me to make a sandwich or burger called a Krabby Patty, I'm going to make a crab cake every time. So, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I invite you to submit your ideas for other foods from movies and television that you've always wondered about, and maybe I'll do a video about them in the coming months. And as always, please subscribe to the channel, please like this video, and definitely share with friends and family. Uh, I'd like to uh, expand my reach, so please do share this video. Until next time, I'm Mike Uyak, and thanks for watching Recipe Redemption.